Well, hey everyone, welcome back. I assume you just watched my top 10 Wisconsin lakes video. Well, the same rules are gonna apply for the top 10 Minnesota lakes. These are all lakes that I have personally fished, documented, and uploaded a video to YouTube. One of our goals here at Golden Moose Fishing is to fish every lake in Minnesota. By every lake, I mean lakes that have public access, a boat landing, and actually contain enough fish it to uh, target. So I currently have 58 lakes in Minnesota that I have uploaded. So these are my top 10 favorite lakes out of those 58. All right, now while making this list, I also consulted Reggie, who if you're watching my videos, you've seen that he fishes most of these lakes with me. And also my father-in-law, Dennis, who has lived in Minnesota his whole life and knows a lot of these lakes, although he does have a bit of a different perspective and some of these lakes we disagree on. So after the top 10 list, we'll be going over some of those lakes as well. All right, let's get started with number 10. We're heading over to Chisago City for Green Lake. All right, Green Lake, it's a 1,809 acre lake. It's got a good reputation for walleye. It's also got good pike, bluegills, crappie, largemouth bass, a little bit of everything in there. Now, if you notice this lake, it's kind of in two parts here. You got the big bottom part, is Green Lake, then go through a little channel and you go into a smaller lake that's called Little Green Lake. Well, we did our best up in Little Green Lake and man, did we catch some big ones. Reggie caught a 26 inch walleye and I caught a 17 and a half inch largemouth bass along with lots of uh, panfish too. Uh, so some pros of this lake, it's easily accessible. It has a nice landing with two docks and there's abundant fish in there and some big ones. Uh, cons, it is right in the city so it can get quite busy and uh, especially during the summer, the water is kind of it's kind of some green water, it's got some algae in it. All right, let's go to number nine. Okay, this one I'm kind of cheating on a little bit. We got North Center and South Center Lake. Uh, this is in the town of Lindstrom, not too far from Green Lake. And we've had this Super Bowl tradition for the last several years now where we go out on Super Bowl Sunday and try to fish a lake uh, for two to three hours and then get home in time for the Super Bowl. So these are the last two lakes that we fished during the Super Bowls. Uh, so we'll start with North Center Lake. It's, uh, it's the smaller of the two, it's at 725 acres. This is on the north side of Highway 8. Uh, when we were there, um, there was some ice racing going on. It was taking up most of the bottom part of the lake. So um, we had to go way up to the north end. And if you notice on the maps, the whole south end is fairly shallow. You had to get up to the north end to actually get some of the deeper water. Um, but we were catching fish after fish after fish. I brought my son Reed with, and he was having a blast. And, uh, you know, catching 20, 30, 40 fish. And then he's like, hey, do you think we can catch 100 fish before we go? So we're like, all right, 100 fish challenge is on. Well, we ended up catching 127 fish before we had to leave. So the next year, he's like, oh, we got to beat our record from last year. So we went to South Center Lake, which is on the south side of Highway 8, slightly bigger at 898 acres. Um, it's got a little different shape too. Um, and it's much deeper, deepest spot is 109 feet. So uh, Reed wanted to beat the previous year, so that was our goal. And we <laughs> stopped at 129 fish, so we beat it by two, and then had to get home for the Super Bowl. All right. Uh, so some pros about this lake, both of them, uh, they have abundant fish. I said both lakes caught over 100 fish in two hours. Uh, Multi-species lake, you can catch a little bit of everything there, uh, but they're mostly managed for pike and walleye. All right, the cons, uh, you got moderate to high fishing pressure for all species there. Like I said, it is right in the town of Lindstrom, so it's easy to get to for a lot of people, especially around the cities area where there's a lot of people, and uh, yeah, lake gets quite busy. All right, going on to number eight, gonna head up to north central Minnesota where there's a group of bigger lakes up there and one of them is Lake Winnebagosh. Uh, this is big water, 56,000 acres. I fish this both in the summer and in the winter. Uh, had better luck in the winter. 
summertime, we ran into a big thunderstorm and had to get off the lake early. Um, and my buddy Justin, who was with, he was trying to um, dock the boat there and he, he fell off the dock into the water. So that was kind of funny. But anyway, uh, excellent perch and walleye here. Uh, you get a few northerns too. Uh, when I stayed there in the winter, I stayed at the High Banks Resort. Beautiful resort. You stay right on the lake. They plow the roads for you. So that's pretty awesome. And we even caught an eel pout there. That was my first time seeing uh, one of those. The pros, you can catch some big walleyes on this lake. It's excellent ice fishing. There's lots of resorts you can stay at up there. And it's in a beautiful country setting. Um, <laughs> speaking of beautiful country setting, uh, <laughs> we pulled our shack up there and we're trying to get to our cabin. And uh, we took a wrong turn and ended up on some trail. So we ended up <laughs> a mile back in the woods in about two feet of snow, got the truck stuck with the shack, had to call for help and have someone plow us out. So that was a good adventure. All right, cons, it is big waters, can be hard to navigate. Uh, if it's your first time there, you might want a fishing guide to help you out. And being it's kind of a big round lake, some wind can get whipping across there in the summer and create some pretty large waves. So you probably want a little bit bigger boat on that lake. All right, let's just head south of Winnie for lake number seven, Leech Lake. Um, another big body. This one's even a little bigger at a, over 100,000 acres. This is a musky factory. In fact, they use the Leech Lake strain of muskies to uh, stock the rest of the lakes in Minnesota. Um, being such a big lake, uh, there's lots of places to fish and you can catch some big fish here. Uh, when I was there, we caught mostly uh, bass and pike um, and didn't get any that were too big, but um, they're in there. We just didn't get them that day. Uh, pros, great place for musky fishermen. Um, and there's so many places to fish and species to fish for, you can spend days on this lake. Some cons, you do get some moderate fishing pressure because it is a popular lake. And it's another one that, you know, you might want to guide if you want to do really well on this lake. All right, number six. We're heading over to Leighton Lake, uh, just east of Lake Winnie and Leech Lake. It's a small lake at 244 acres, so you've probably never, <clears throat> probably never even heard of this lake, but there's a lot of smaller lakes around in this area that were really good. Um, we had non-stop action on this lake. Uh, pretty much all bass in Northern Pike. So one thing I learned about on this lake, uh, I was fishing with Reggie and uh, my other buddy, Justin, who uh, has been on a couple videos, but Reggie and I were just pulling in fish after fish after fish and Justin wasn't getting a single bite. And they're like, all right, something's going on here. We gotta figure this out. So Justin was in the back of the boat. <clears throat> I'm like, all right, Justin, Move up to my spot, I'll move in your spot. I took his pole, we switched poles, so we, he had my pole and lure, I had his pole and lure, and I was in his spot, started fishing. A Couple casts later I caught one, he still wasn't catching one. So we had to really analyze and look at his presentation. We noticed about the last 10 feet, he was just kind of pulling out of the water and reeling it up. I'm like, that's where most of our fish are biting. As you reel it in, you slow it down, let the bait kind of drop down lower, and right before it comes up to the boat, that's where a lot of the fish like to bite. So we taught him how to do that, and a couple casts later, he caught his fish. So it all came down to presentation. So even though we we're all using the same exact lure, pretty much the same poles, we we're in the same boat, it came down to who had the best presentation was catching the fish. All right, so um, like I said, there's other lakes nearby. We fished Willow, Vermilion, not the big Vermilion, this is Vermilion with two L's in it, <laughs> and uh, Pokegama, and all those were some really good lakes. All right, pros, tons of action on this lake. Uh, you're gonna catch a lot of pike and bass, and it's easy, uh, small, easy lake to fish. We just went around the perimeter and caught fish around the whole lake. Cons, uh, the fish, you know, smaller fish, you're not gonna catch any trophies here, and the landing, uh, fairly primitive landings, just has some concrete blocks. There's no dock or anything, and it kind of goes right in between some weeds, so a little bit harder landing to use. 
All right, let's head up to northern Minnesota in St. Louis County. We're going to Lake Vermilion. This is Vermilion with one L in it. <laughs> There's a, a lot of lakes uh, named Vermilion in, throughout Minnesota and Wisconsin, but this is probably the most famous Vermilion out there. All right, so my father-in-law, Dennis, has, uh, he grew up up there, his parents lived there, and now he has his parents' house as their fishing cabin. So he's been up there his whole life fishing this lake, and he'd probably put it number one on his list, where Reggie didn't even put it on his ten, top 10 list. So I've been up there several times, fished with both of these guys, and uh, if you happen to live up there or been on this lake, you know right where the fish are and when they're gonna be there, and then you go target them at that time, and you can do really well. Uh, first couple times I went up with Reggie, we just kind of willy-nilly just looked at their guidebooks and tried to pick a spot to fish. And even though we caught a few, we didn't do as well as I did when I was fishing with Dennis. So I can see why Reggie wouldn't put it on his top 10 list because, you know, he didn't do so well. Um, you know, it's a big lake. So if, you, if you've never been there before, you might want to get a guide or uh, really look at some uh, guidebooks to know where to fish there. Um, it is over 39,000 acres. Uh, most people go there fish for walleye or uh, some trophy muskies, but it is a multi-species lake. We caught a little bit of everything there, and I'll link a video below that shows us trying to fish the entire lake for just about every species out there. Um, yeah, we tried fishing it the whole lake in one day, and it's just too big. We couldn't quite cover the whole thing, but we tried. Uh, quick story about this lake. Uh, when I was up there with Reggie, I was wide open, full throttle going across the lake, kind of cutting through this channel. Um, and also my fish finder blipped that there's a fish. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, there's a fish. I slammed it in neutral, threw up my pole, and about two seconds later, I caught a tiger muskie. I'm like, okay, that'll never happen again. But it was a lot of fun. All right, some pros. You can get some trophy muskie on this lake. In fact, we've had our biggest muskie to date follow us up to the boat. We didn't catch him, but it was a monster. Uh, there's abundant walleye there. I said most people fish for the walleye and, uh, when I up there at Dennis, yeah, we'd catch over 30 walleyes in a single crack. Uh, it's a multi-species lake, so you know if you want to fish for something else, you can. There's a little bit of everything there, and there's endless places to fish. It's a huge lake. It's got the, if you look at the shape of the lake, there's endless, you know, little bays and nooks and crannies to fish in. All right, cons. Uh, I said it's a big lake, so you might want to guide if you're new there. Uh, the hot spots there get crowded said all the locals know like where the walleyes are and when they're gonna bite and you'll know because there's a lot of boats in one spot. Uh, this lake also has a lot of hazards and <laughs> a lot of rock piles under the water and uh, if you're not careful you can hit one just out in the middle of the open. I've been going across there before and all of a sudden out of nowhere it comes up to like a foot deep and a big rock ledge so watch out. Uh, a lot of buoys, pay attention to those buoys. And uh, when it gets windy out, you get out in the big part of the lake, it can get uh, some big waves out there, so it can be hard to navigate across. All right, number four. We're going to head northwest of that Vermilion Lake up to Ash Lake. Uh, it's only a 669-acre lake with a max depth of 29 feet. This is a very beautiful, scenic lake. I love this lake. It's got a variety of bottom structure and it is filled with smallmouth bass. Uh, caught a lot of smallmouth bass. Um, and on down on the uh, southeast side, we actually hooked into some pretty big northern pike. Now, there's some other lakes nearby this one. Uh, Elephant Lake and also the number one lake on our list, which I'll tell you in a minute. But uh, see the black ducks over there too, a bunch of little lakes, kind of near the town of Orr, Minnesota. Uh, all these lakes were great. Uh, I just picked Ash as my favorite of the little ones over there. Uh, we had a good time in that lake. So pros, it's a small, easy to fish lake again. It's very scenic, not crowded at all. I think we were the only boat on that lake. Uh, it has a very nice boat landing and it is smallmouth heaven. If you like smallmouth, this is a lake for you. And, <laughs> but it also has some vicious perch in there. Holy cow, had a lot of perch and they were just attacking our bait. Even our bigger lures we put on, they are just nipping at it all the way in. Uh, the cons, a little less variety of fish on this lake. So you're probably gonna catch mostly smallmouth bass. You catch a few perch and uh, 
some uh, northern pike if you target them. And I uh, just put, trying to find some cons here, I just put it's kind of a far drive uh, for most people. It's uh, way up in northern Minnesota. So if you want to fish this lake, it's going to be a little bit of a drive up there. All right, let's hit number three on the list. We're going uh, just straight west of Duluth, the town of McGregor. We have a big sandy lake. All right, so when we were there, it was a very windy day and I was having some boat motor issues. So <laughs> all I could do is stay in idle. So we had to idle around the lake and it was very windy with the big waves, so it was very hard to navigate. But uh, we did our best. Um, if you look at the shape of this lake, it has just endless bays and places to go in, hide away from the wind, and places to fish. And there are tons of northern pike in here. In fact, that's all we caught. And uh, I put it, as, it was kind of getting ridiculous after a while. It's just, I mean, one after the other after the other. And I first started out with some smaller ones, but then we started getting into some bigger ones. I put on my bigger lures and uh, it worked. I started catching them on my musky lures. I uh, have talked to other people now who fished this lake and said they did catch some other fish in here. can't remember if they were saying crappies or, or bass or something, but uh, there are other fish in here. We just didn't see anything else. All we saw was northern pike. All right, so um, the Sandy River flows out of the bottom of it there, and it goes into a couple other lakes. So you can actually fish in there too and get to these other lakes through it. So uh, you have more options there. Uh, just great weed lines and lots of structure to fish on on this lake. So pros, this is a lake for pike lovers. My goodness, if you want to catch northern pike, this is the place to go. We love catching northern, so we loved it. Uh, it's big water, it's lots of places to fish, and you get lots of action. No cons, uh, we didn't get much variety. The only fish caught was northern pike, so um, you can try for other stuff. I know there's stuff in there. I just, I can't tell you, I only went up there once, so. Uh, and then there's a, an unmarked sandbar that runs across this one area. And luckily I, was, I had my GPS maps out and I'm like, it looks kind of shallow, so I was taking her slow and we ended up beaching our boat right in the middle of this channel. And it took us a while to get out. Uh, I can't believe they don't have that marked with a buoy, but anyway, watch out for hazards on this lake. All right, we are up to number two. We're gonna go way up to northern Minnesota, up to Voyagers National Park, and we are going to Lake Cabotogama. And uh, if you watch the video for this one, yes, I do have a hard time saying the name of this lake. I get it wrong a lot. Cabotogama. All right, uh, it's another big water up uh, over 24,000 acres with a maximum depth of 80 feet. Uh, this is just beautiful, pristine waters. It, it's like fishing a Canadian lake, but you're not in Canada. You're real close, but not in it, but it just has that Canadian feel to it. It's got a lot of these rocky shorelines and also some nice weedy bays with nice clear water. So you get good weed lines that go out deep due to the water clarity. Now this lake is known for its walleyes. Um, it also has trophy pike, jumbo perch, and smallmouth bass. It's not very busy either. Uh, when we were up there, I mean, there's a couple boats out there, but you pretty much hardly run into anybody. Uh, you can go fish any place you want and not feel the pressure. Uh, we stay at the Wooden Frog uh, campground. I think it's a, a state park. But anyway, very primitive. I kind of like those campgrounds anyway, but uh, yeah, not much for amenities up there. There are a few resorts around the lake there you can stay at if you want a little more high class <laughs> staying. But uh, uh, yeah, you're kind of away from it all, just out in the wilderness, and uh, we love that. So pros, if you want to get away from it all, this is the lake for you. And it has excellent fishing and just natural beauty. Uh, cons, I, I really had a hard time finding any cons, but I came up with, uh, it can be intimidating for new anglers. It's a big lake, and if you've never been up there before, uh, lots of places to fish. So. I'd say just make sure you have good maps and GPS uh, if you want to explore the whole lake because uh, you know you can easily get lost on these bigger lakes. Dun, dun, dun. Number one, our all-time favorite lake to fish in Minnesota so far is uh, heading back to Orr, Minnesota for Pelican Lake. All right, this is a large lake. It's uh, over 11,000 acres and it has it all. 
Uh, Multi-species lake, excellent fishing. It's in a country setting, but still close to a lot of amenities. Reggie and I fish this lake all day long, and we only seen a fraction of this lake just because the fish everywhere we went to fish, it was so good, we didn't want to leave that spot, but we kept trying to move around, and it's just like, oh man, we got to come back to this lake because uh, we have not seen it all yet. Uh, just a beautiful lake. Pros, abundant fish of all species, lots of locations to fish. Um, just so much structure and variety. You had weeds beds, you had rock piles, you had islands, you had bays, uh, shallow spots, deep spots, you name it, you had it all. Um, it's got nice boat landings that are very close to amenities. Uh, we wanted to have lunch, so we just pulled up this boat landing, ran up to a grocery store, got some food, came back and left. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, cons, man, I really didn't have any other than Again, it's up in northern Minnesota, so <laughs> uh, if you don't live up there, it might be a far drive, and you may have to uh, spend a couple days, camp out, or stay somewhere to fish this lake. All right, there you have it. That's my top 10 favorite lakes I've fished so far in Minnesota. Well, here's a few more lakes that Reggie and Dennis mentioned that didn't make my top 10 list. First, we got Vermilion. Now, this is the Little Vermilion over by Layton Lake. That was uh, number six on our list. Um, the one with two L's in the name. <laughs> uh, like I said, there was a bunch of smaller lakes around there, and uh, I picked Layton Lake, and uh, Reggie picked Vermilion Lake to be on his list. So either one of those, they're both really good lakes. Uh, Vermilion with one L up in St. Louis County. Uh, we already discussed this, where it'd probably be number one in Dennis's list, but Reggie didn't even put it on his top ten list. Uh, we already discussed that. All right, here's one. Ah, it's right on the border of South Dakota. Actually, it makes up the border there. Big Stone Lake. This is another one where uh, Dennis used to have a uh, cabin over in Ortonville, so he fished this lake a lot. This is one of those lakes, again, where you have to know where to go and when to go there, and you can catch some jumbo perch and some walleye and do really well. But every time I've been there, Man, it's winds blowing 30 miles an hour, there's gigantic waves, and we don't catch any fish. So for me and Reggie, we just like, this is going on our worst lakes to fish, where Dennis is like, hey, top 10. So <laughs> kind of curious, if you fished uh, Big Stone, how you did there. Now there's two other lakes real close to there. You got Traverse and, uh, I'm not sure how to say it, Lac, Lac Cupraro. Anyway, they're kind of long, skinny, very shallow lakes. Uh, I, think, I think we fished that Lac Cuparo one, and uh, yeah, most of the lake was only like two to three feet deep. I uh, did find some deeper holes down the southern end. Uh, me and Reggie fished this whole area for like four days. We just hit it, and we caught zero fish except on Lac, Lac Cuparo there. We caught one, uh, I think it was a buffalo, some old buffalo or something like that. <laughs> but fish were just jumping out of the water left and right, and I think they were all carp and stuff, and we talked to people there, and they're like, yeah, the fish haven't, uh, they've been turned off for the last two weeks and haven't seen anything, so we just, I think you just hit this area at the wrong time, but eh, still not my favorite lake. Um, Dennis said Lake of the Woods, which I agree, I love that lake. Uh, Reggie and I did go up there and fish that lake, but uh, I didn't list it because uh, most of the lake is located in Canada. Well, you can get to it from the U.S. too. Um, so I consider it more of a Canadian lake. But uh, as of today, I still has my biggest uh, northern pike ever caught was on Lake of the Woods at 37 inches. Uh, I even went up to uh, Lake Wollaston, way up in northern Saskatchewan, where they have monster pike. And I had some on that went well over 40, but... Never got him in the boat, so still 37 inches is standing as my personal best there. Uh, so Dennis also mentioned Burntside Lake. That's up real close to Vermilion, right in the edge of the boundary waters there. Um, super clear water, big boulders in there. It's a very deep lake, but man, they have some big fish in there. Um, we were there uh, several times, a couple times, yeah, in the... We saw just big monster pike following our baits and it's just so hard to catch them when they didn't want to bite. But man, being that clear water like that just gets your heart pumping when you see them. Um, it's kind of a hard lake to fish though because uh, very steep shorelines, very deep lake. So you got to really find up these little shallow shelves there. 
Um, also had just a monster smallmouth bass on there too. It's like every fish in there is just gigantic. They're just hard to catch. Uh, I believe they catch uh, lake trout and stuff up there too, being the cold, deep water. So I didn't list it just because um, as much as I love this lake and this beauty and this water, it's just hard lake to fish. They don't catch a whole lot there, but if you do catch one, it's probably gonna be a monster. And then the one lake that everyone's probably wondering if I'm gonna mention or not, we got uh, Lake Mille Lacs, probably the most popular lake in Minnesota. Dennis has it on his top 10 list. I gotta say it's, it's a good lake, it's just not my favorite lake. Uh, I've been up there a couple times, summer and winter. Uh, just caught some monster walleyes through the ice there. Uh, first time I fished it, uh, Tony Roach, uh, the fishing guide, uh, popular fishing guide up there, uh, he brought us out and we did really well. In fact, they were filming a, a Midwest Outdoors was out there filming an episode and we got to be on it. So that was kind of cool. So I did have fun there, but uh, overall, it's one of those lakes that you probably want to guide for if you haven't been there before. Um, it's kind of just big round lake and you just got to find where the humps and stuff are, where the, the fish are. Uh, they do have some just gigantic muskies there too. If you can hook into one of those, you can get a trophy muskie catch some huge walleye. There are a lot of special regulations with this lake. Uh, in the summertime too, it can get uh, really windy and just huge waves and it's hard to get out there on the main lake and, and fish. So uh, it's a good lake, just wasn't my favorite and didn't make my top 10 list. All right, uh, hope you enjoyed uh, Minnesota's top 10 lakes that I enjoyed fishing anyway. Um, if you like this one, I am currently working on my top 10 worst lakes to fish. <laughs> Now, okay, I've enjoyed every lake I fish, but there are some, you know, that are just better than others. Uh, so these are lakes I would say, you know, once is enough. Probably don't need to go back to this one. <laughs> all right, to see all 58 lakes that uh, were in the running for the top 10, you can check out my Minnesota Lakes playlist right up here. And now I want to know what your favorite Minnesota lakes are. You can either tell me down in the comments or just uh, email me at randy at gomidwestfishing.com. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.